Last time on Poker Ain't Life. This is a war fight. And it's really no different than it's always been. People across the line, this is back in the American Revolutionary War. They used to say, this is the best way to fight. This is how we fight. We all line up and fight like this. If you don't fight like this, you should be ashamed of yourself. But it's propaganda for you to fight in a way. Right? They want everybody to line up and fight their way. And us, the outliers and the characters, are like, fuck that. Tens of thousands of people out here, poor players. For us, it's more to life than poker. Poker to me is a community, being able to meet good people, have a drink with good people. It's just letting people know there's more to life than poker. Man, yeah, poker and life for the gang, for the community. We're out here trying to, you know, bring people, maybe the underrepresented people, into the spotlight. Anybody that, you know, kind of has a crazy story, kind of is going through similar struggles, but we feel like a lot of the media outlets out there right now aren't really telling the crazy stories that we really actually live with. So we started the podcast and we, you know, kind of try to play off the theme and support the life of the right? but that's okay. history lesson. <laughs> Poker well, and mean, history, fire. It's just kind of like I look at it like the Revolutionary War as yeah. compared to now. The the guys were saying, the the English soldiers were saying, let's line up and fight, straightforward, GTO style. You yeah. one soldier falls down, the next one moves up. Mm -hmm. This is the way we should all fight. And the Americans said, no, we're going to come in and fight our own way with our own style. And that worked. Yeah. It works. Yeah. And it's the same thing today when these GTO players are coming in. You're supposed to fight this <laughs> way and only play this way. Yeah. Bitch, who says so? You can <laughs> run things, you know? Exactly. And then when people even bring the idea, like, like, I, like they think that because we don't participate in the GTO fully, that we don't understand it. Bro, I'm from Houston. We have... A giant statue of Sam Houston. Okay. That's I'm talking Mr. GTO. Yeah. Who's mm -hmm. had to make the tough decisions. Uh, I'm talking, mm. bro, I'm I'm Texas through and through. I fight like a Texan, mm -hmm. I play like a Texan. And Isn't I there a Texas to, tat as well? Well, I have this be someone tat. This is about as Texas as you can get it's from Houston. Mm. Yeah, what, what does that say now? What is bro, it? There's, when you're driving into downtown Houston, which I used to drive up okay. to my fire department job every day, yeah, yeah. you drive under this bridge, right, uh, going into downtown, and it uh, says, be someone. Uh, mm. When you're driving into Houston, into that city every morning, and you just see, be someone. I fucking love that. Bro, that's that's so it's, dope, bro. It's like, the, it's like the best piece of graffiti I've ever seen. It is fucking sick. I'm going to have this colored in blue. It's, it's the original... Artwork was like this color, okay, okay. and then the gold bracelet tattoo. Yeah. And then you, th you were telling us earlier, thinking about getting those gold tattoos. That I seen. am thinking yeah. about it, but I mean, it's hard for me not to wear the bracelet out because everybody loves it so much. <laughs> mm, yeah, they, no. they love seeing me wear this yeah. bracelet out. I like to take it off, let them wear it, take pictures. Oh uh, yeah, oh yeah. Uh, Damien's gonna want to wear it after. I don't want to <laughs> <say, laughs> take this uh, poker <laughs> news rubber band off. <laughs> Definitely an upgrade. And then speaking about the bracelet, right? So. Like, how did you guys, like, was last year your first year where you came in for, like, a full series, or was it the year before? Kind of like, yeah, tell us a little bit about that and the connection with, like, how the Poker Stallions got together. Because what we're trying okay. to do for, like, our group, we have, like, our Poker and Life group. Mm -hmm. And even though we're still new, this is, like, our first year having a group here, and it feels amazing to have, like, people that you, like, speak to all the time, like, see them do well. You're both running deep in the tournament. Mm -hmm. So it feels good, like, we're still in our early stages, but I feel like you guys blew up overnight. Some people have been playing for decades and never achieved what the Stallions have done. Mm -hmm. So tell us, how did the Stallions come together and what that was like for that year with, when everyone was starting to see success? Okay, great question. But before I get to how the Stallions actually came together, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The work that went into it for like years before yeah. that went into it by myself and Will. Shout and, out to and, Will. And myself, Rockets Will, and Cosmonite, David Masvidal. Mm -hmm. The main thing we did was we learned how to play first. Bro. We learned how to play. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think you're seeing it now. We, we're playing tournament poker now, but I tell her this all the time. Tournaments are a simulation of real life. Yeah. Me and Will and David are actual poker players. If all else goes away, social media, tournaments, casinos, legal gambling, online, whatever goes away, we're still gonna play poker. Sure. We're the real deal. Mm -hmm. And so we spent years becoming the real deal first and learning how to win. Yeah. And then we just got together. 
Will had a great idea that he presented to Mattress Mac about getting all these poker players together, and we knew we needed the city behind a team kind of to get this thing rolling, just like the NFL or anything else. They started out with a few teams and cities. Right, you know? absolutely. So Will put together a great, he has a business degree, put something together, went to Mac, he loves gambling. Okay. Mac loved it. Will made me basically his like first round draft picked guy, even though I wasn't at all a tournament guy, mm -hmm. but Will knew that I had other attributes that weren't necessarily in the tournament poker. You know, okay. before this, I was just a guy going to Vegas like Doyle Brunson said, go once a year to the World Series, yeah. do your part, add to the game, make poker bigger. Yep. By going to the World Series of Poker, you make poker grow, and then mm -hmm. you work on yourself as a poker player, mm -hmm. and you profit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I'm to the point where I see that I'm not just a person who just goes. Like, I mean something. I represent Houston when I go. I re yeah. represent Texas. I have a bigger thing. I got to do bigger things, you know? Yeah, yeah. And that's what we're doing here now, doing these tournaments. Yeah. Uh, and the Mattress Mac thing, we did it the first year, and it was a blast. It was, it was fun. Yeah. Well put together, well organized by Will. The players played great. It was a fantastic team. I loved it. We're like brothers for life. And I was in the army, the fire department, played sports, and the Stallions was like a team, a brotherhood, you yeah. know, like kind of like that. Yeah. And uh, it's it was an interesting, and it still is, a, an idea it's, going on. It's basically for future poker players coming up, mm -hmm. kind of put them under our wing, yeah. you know, Definitely. take care of them when they get kicked down, kick them around a little bit ourselves. But Got yeah, to. You know, bring if they want to be someone. Exactly. Yeah, that's right, if they want to be someone. If they, well, I never knew you played sports. Uh, what sport, what position? Luckily, I lived in a small town, so I played all sports, all positions. I was the stud quarterback, stud shortstop. I mean, I got to do everything. everything. I mean, I wouldn't say stud. Even for, like, the four boys, I was probably, like, this third or second best of my yeah. But he had confidence. Yeah. And yes. that is, and like, what compete. makes his game so good is yeah. Yeah. his confidence. And that what, that's what also helped the team. Yeah. Like mm. that was like Scott's role in the team, giving everyone confidence and believing in themselves. That's you know, important. So that's mm. and he knew he was going to win a bracelet. He did it. Bro, so oh. this this brings me back to a story that I never really told good this way. Like I'm going to try to tell it. Okay. But it kind of ties in like this. This is a really cool story, bro. Okay. So when I was a kid, I went to this little small town. It was the end, the last football game of the year, like a homecoming game type mm -hmm. thing. Okay. And all the players and the cheerleaders and their parents and all the fans are coming out of the stands onto the field after the game is over. Mm -hmm. And this quarterback, they lost the, the game, by the way. I went to Trent, Texas. Trent, Texas is a little six-man football school, the Trent Gorillas, dude. <laughs> and it's like everybody's coming out on the field. The whole town is coming out there. And the football player, he takes his his shoulder pads off, and he's got the sweaty shirt, and he like comes through this crowd of people. And this was a blonde-haired kid with curly blonde hair, okay. and he had a big red birthmark on his face. Oh. I think God made all these images there, so I would remember this lesson. Yeah. His last name was Pain. Okay. Mm. I don't know if you know this, but sometimes you learn lessons better if you could if, if it's yeah, painful. Yeah, for sure. well, I was a little kid and God didn't want me to be painful, but he put the name pain in there yeah. this whole thing. You know? okay. And this kid like comes up through the crowd and he puts his hand on my shoulder and he's like, You're the one. One day you're gonna mean something to all these people in this town. He's like, This game Fair. is 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 all they have in this town. And you're the one. You're the next quarterback. We need you to work hard. You're going to mean something someday. Mm -hmm. Keep that in mind. You can never quit. You can never quit. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. And he goes away. Dude, I moved away from that hometown. Yeah. But I kept that lesson my whole life. Yeah, when I started playing poker, that face of that dude kept coming back to really? me. Really? You're going to wow. mean something. You're going to mean something, you know? Wow. Damn, and, that's dope. And, that you is. know, that's what I try to do in poker now. You know, we have an opportunity. And uh, we're trying to do something yeah. on a, on a big stage too, because even if you think about it, poker is not just a game locally here in the United States. It's a game all over the world. And I think one of the biggest things for you is that you have the opportunity to put uh, poker on the map 
and different events like the Tournament of Champions, which you recently played. Yeah. So, like, tell us a little bit about what it was like. When I think Tournament of Champions, I'm just thinking all beasts. Probably, like, the hardest so, tournament you could play. What was that like compared to a normal tournament? And then tell us a little bit about what that experience was like with the deep run as well. Uh, it was it was badass. I loved uh, being in L.A. and getting to represent H-Town there. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, it, it was fun. But um, I did notice, though, it was tough competition. There was no, like, donkeys. Yeah. Nobody just giving money away. Mm -hmm. right, right. But there wasn't a lot of bracelet winners. There was a lot of ring winners there. Uh -huh. oh. There were several people at my times where I was at the table, and they were like, oh, a bracelet, man, I've never seen one. Right, right. So there was a lot of ring winners there, too. God, okay. Uh, but what I thought was so cool about L.A. was it was produced so well. It was. The cameras and things like that. And that's yeah. what I... I was really upset that I didn't go further. I was obviously the best player there, and, yeah. and I, I should have, well, I should have won. <laughs> and stayed on that production a little bit longer. Yeah, yeah. But um, I don't know how I messed that one up. But I loved just being there and getting to rep represent Houston, my family, on that stage with that production. Yeah. And uh, that's what we're hoping is that every time we're doing something, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Definitely. And we got a message to put out there, and. and and we want to do our thing, you know. Hell yeah. So how is the World Series of Poker going for you guys? One week in, we're up on money. Okay, that's but cool. we're down on, you know, until I have a bracelet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're it, down on expenses. You know how it is in Vegas. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, until I get a bracelet on my hand, I don't feel like I've succeeded. And this is a long, long tournament. But yeah. I'm nowhere near discouraged or anything right now. It's very, very early and... I mean, hell, I just made a final table last week, and I made a deep run in the, the mystery. mystery yeah, yeah. yeah, so we're up on money, just don't have the gold yet. Really. So you have to need the match in one on the other side. Yeah. Yes, sir. I made so, a little bit of a deep run in the mystery as well. I was proud of myself. But, nice. uh, yeah, thank you, thank you. What place did you get in that? 104. Oh, okay, better than me. What place did you get? <laughs> 310, I believe. So it was never, I got one bounty. It was cool for the minimum. Hey, I didn't play. Did you play? No, I didn't. No. All right, we're right there. We didn't lose. <laughs> we didn't lose. the gladiator yesterday, yeah, the deep stack. I mean, the deep stack yesterday. How'd you do in that, and what do you think of the competition yeah, in the field? Yeah. Um, actually, I was surprised at how many regulars there were. Well, not surprised, but there were a lot of... Just Familiar faces. No, just like people new to the game. Yeah. Uh, oh, for real? Yeah. They were just like looking at me, and they're like, wow, like you're so good. And I'm like, I'm, <laughs> I'm honored, but... Yeah. You know, like, I was just surprised by that, and they were, like, you know, asking questions and just happy to be there. You were surprised yeah. at how bad the players were? That's what I was going <laughs> to say. That's what she said. And yeah. uh, to be honest, I, I agree with her because yeah. I had the impression that, you know, everybody was going to be a lot better. When I went, first came out here, I won a trip, and I they put me over at the Golden Nuggets. So I was playing with a lot of bar locals and it's not much different from you know the WSOP from the Golden Nugget yeah. to be honest like the, the field is not that hard so if you're watching this and you're scared to come out here and play WSOP man come on out maybe Fireman Scott will meet you and let you wear the bracelet that's you know what I mean yeah that's it you have to yeah yeah, yeah exactly yeah. and so speaking of experience right like I came up on the online streets so for me, the adjustment to online to live, like I'm, it's a lot easier than someone just coming up like out of nowhere. How did both of you get into poker? Like my introduction was the money maker, seeing him on TV. I'm like, all right, this is pretty cool. And then I took it serious when I seen a uh, shout out to Dwight Pilgrim. I kind of like how he, he had his own little swag to it. And I feel you have a certain swag and demeanor about you at the table in your presence. And just like you mentioned, the confidence. I think confidence goes a really long way in poker. Mm -hmm. So for me, I just like the competitive nature where it's like, hey, it's not necessarily about the money, but it's about coming first or to, for the bracelet or to have the accolades is what I chase. Yeah, yeah. So I want to know how did you guys get into poker and what about poker keeps you guys going right now? Is it the money? Is it the accolades? Is it a competition? So how'd you guys get into it and what keeps you going? Well, I got into it same as you, Chris Moneymaker phase. I knew I was going to be good at it. You know, just started studying, started online, had my first six-figure score online. Mm -hmm. Went from there. Just what site? Yeah, what site? 
Titan poker. Oh, I remember Titan, the yeah. blue icon. Yeah, the blue yeah, icon. Yeah, yeah. I played a little, they had like a little dollar frenzy. It uh -huh. took my dollar every day. <laughs> <laughs> well, they had a promotion on there that you would win $100,000 if you could win six sit and goes in a row. Mm -hmm. And nobody had ever done it. They thought it was impossible. And I was like, I can do that shit. Mm -hmm. I was the first human to ever do it. Wow. Yeah. I never well, knew no, that. No, no, no. Legend. So, and so as soon as I did that I was like nobody can ever tell me that I can't do something again okay. the next thing I said what's the next biggest thing you got and they said there's a tournament in Louisiana called the seven clans tournament I said I'll go win that and was I it seven clans seven clans tournament and I went and I won that and then they said I said what's the next biggest thing and they said I, well, I started noticing PLO was where all the cash was. Mm. And they said, you can't make a living playing PLO. I said, bet, let's go. Well. And that one was hard, bro. Yeah. That's where the real grind took in. He knows, for that's, sure. That's <laughs> I've, I've texted them at least six times a year, I quit poker. Like, PLO will make you quit. Like, I'm just dead inside where, like, I literally have to just stay away from PLO. But, yeah, well, for the most part, I just chill on the tournament side. It's fun, win or lose. But PLO so, will well, definitely that, hurt you. On that PLO side, I mean, bro, I don't quit. And so, I mean, I became Mr. PLO, not just in Houston, but dude, I meet, every day I meet kids from New York City who are like 21, 22 years old. They're like, Fireman Scott, I started playing poker because of you. I started uh, playing PLO because that's of you. That's fucking So again, that would just like with the game of PLO, just like with the city of Houston and the state of Texas, I feel attached to it, like I have a responsibility now, you know, and yeah. I'm, I'm deep, this is my career right. now, this is my life, you know. Mm -hmm. And a few years ago, I saw where they made a new category for the, the Poker Hall of Fame, that you could get into the Hall of Fame for your influence on the game. Oh. Mm. And as soon as I heard that, I was like, that made me step up. When I, when I would, before I would get out of my car at a poker game, I'd turn it off and I'd go, before you go in there, this may be somebody's first time to ever meet Fireman Scott. This may be their first time to play with them. Maybe their last time. I go, give them a show. You're Fireman Scott. Be Fireman Scott. Let's go. I go and Fuck I go yeah. and with them and I do it, bro. I, Fuck I yeah. could attest to that. I love that, bro. I, I mean, could attest to literally that. literally what I do with poker in life. I try to bring all, all of us together. I mean, there's, there's kids that... You know they're doing vlogs and they're you know they're playing cash games like one two you know what I mean that and they're looking at poker in life gotcha looking at poker in life like you know we're we're superstars but we're really not you know and it's just good that we can you know bring the community together and you know let these guys know that you know come out and fire your shot and you know we'll help you study we'll help you get better and you know you're not alone but um. Before the million dollar question, Hold do you on. have anything you guys want to plug? Or oh wait, did you? Yeah, I got to know how you got into it. I I'm mean, sorry. you're here oh, in the God. streets. You're you're, you're, you're around here having like people look up to you, getting tips from yeah. you, doing autographs now too. How do you get into the game? <laughs> and what keeps you motivated now to keep playing? You want me to tell? Him? Well, okay. <laughs> so actually, I didn't know really anything about poker. Okay. Um, my brother had a game. He had recently partnered up with Scott, and they needed someone to come work, serve drinks, mm -hmm. you know. And I just graduated high school. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> so my brother was like, hey, come in. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I walked through the door, there was people, but I don't remember who else was there. I just saw Scott. Oh, hey. <laughs> like Love that first sight. Love that first sight, hey. for real, I, huh? And that's what I always tell people. I was like, I don't really believe in love at first sight, but that it's, was yeah. It, it, was it the long blonde hair? Was that no? no? Yeah. I had short hair. Yeah. Oh yeah. Was, <laughs> yeah. So I worked there, and you know, we didn't date for. We just knew each other, you know. Sure. And um, then you know, we started getting serious, and I would stand behind him and just watch. Mm -hmm. I loved watching. I loved watch er, hearing him talk at the table because. He has a presence at yeah, the table. He's, yeah. always he's entertaining. You know, so mm -hmm. I loved that. Um, but I would just watch and I learned that way. And then I just started playing tournaments. My first tournament I got third place in. And it just, I was like, I'm good at this. I've oh. always been a competitor myself. Oh, yeah. um, I feel like I read people pretty well. So I was like, yes. hey, you know. And 
we so feed off of each other. She's so. my buddy's sister, and then when she started working the games oh. for us, one time I walked in, she was making me a drink, and she had a skirt on, and I just ran my finger right on her leg. Oh, no. I was like, hey, girl. <laughs> <laughs> so kids, don't try that at home. Kids, don't try that at home. So you two are still buddies, I hope. Well, yeah. No, actually, it was just the deal. There was two poker games in Houston, yep. and they said, Fireman Scott, can you come to our game exclusively? Because okay. whatever game I went to was the one that was going. Yeah. yeah. So I said, I'll come. But I need you to start at noon. And they said we don't have a girl. I said, if there's no girl, there's no deal. Okay. And he goes, my sister just graduated high school. How about her? And I go, that. There you go. Mm. Do it. Nice. No, and and now here you are. So now that you're into your poker journey, okay. have you had your first, second, third, fourth, fifth win yet? Like, tell us a little bit about like your deepest run or your most like proud poker moment like i feel like when someone's getting into the game it could be like their biggest pot it could be their first win what's your like most proudest poker accomplishment so far well really um so we have two young children so mm -hmm. for me i don't get out to do tournaments as much mm -hmm. so um well i think the bracelet win for me was you too. That was yeah. 50 50. Yeah. I couldn't have done yeah. that place without her. I wouldn't. Yeah. That's so dope. That, yeah. was, that was her too. That's so. a poker love story yeah, right there, man. Yeah, the, the, this is her bracelet more than it is mine. Oh. Actually, I mean, Let's she see. does a lot of the, the hard behind the scenes work that yeah. nobody gets to see. Like, yeah, man. I mean, I'm a weird person, dude. <laughs> I mean, to be, you know what I mean? To, to do some of the things that I do, I, I understand I'm kind of a crazy person. And yeah. Sometimes there's people I know that they could like me, but they can't be around me too long or whatever. Yeah. She could be around me for a lifetime. It's insane. I don't know. Yeah. I just, you know, I can always know what he needs. Yeah. Mm. Um, I can see when he's getting off track. Yeah. Um, not being as disciplined. So that's like my job. Okay. You know, like I love poker, but it's also like I love my family. I love him, and I want our family to do well. Yeah. And, uh, Right now, that's his time. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, just there was support. Yeah. Yeah. I no, I love it. Journey. And the, the shared bracelet, where it's like, I feel for you guys. Family is everything. Yeah. Religion is everything. Poker is everything. Success is everything. Well, is and everything? I don't know, which is why I think <laughs> we should go to the million dollar question, well, Tony. Before we go to the million dollar question, I just want to ask you guys: Is there anything you want to plug? I know, shout out, shout out your kids, shout out your job. I don't know. Uh, well, yeah, we do have a company, fireandsmokepokergear.com. Okay. As you see, like I said earlier, we, we branded the, yeah. the fire department, the Fireman Scott name. Hell yeah. And before I was even a fire department guy, I loved the shirts. Yeah. You know, the fire department logo shirts. Gotcha. And so we went from there, and then we have another, we don't have anything with us right now, but we also have a softer logo. Okay. It's more Tia-inspired, the Nine of Diamonds. Okay. People always say, hey, that's your favorite card, that's you. No. That's her. Yeah, okay. That, that's okay. my better hat. Is that what the 9-9 nine, nine is? I mean, I know that's like the... There's uh, a white hat with the... the yeah. yeah. And, and, and sometimes we have the logo up for an H. For mm -hmm. With the Houston, Houston with the... Yeah. Uh -huh. You did and that? It, that shit is fire. I ain't gonna lie. I like it. And sometimes I have it uh, horizontally because I'm a yellow mm -hmm. player. So okay. I look at my cards, you know, horizontally. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we, we play around with the brand a little bit. But we oh, like yeah. it. Yeah, fire and smoke. Yeah, well, we definitely we, we love your brand, and hopefully you guys like ours. We got some stuff for you guys. If, if you guys oh, like any yeah. of our uh, gear, um, just pick one. I don't Absolutely. mean, I don't know which one you guys like would want. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. And um, oh, we'll definitely have to, Thank you me. know, trade gear, or I'll even go buy some. I like the no, we'll I like yeah, pocket money. Yeah, man. But, um. And shout out your kids as well. You don't have to say their names or anything, no. but <laughs> if you don't want to, but uh, well, yeah. I mean, our kids at the Paris Hotel, yeah, right now, Atticus and Leona. Everybody okay. knows them. So, okay. Oh yeah. So everybody nice. in Houston in the poker world knows them. Oh yeah. So they're here with us all summer. They stayed with us in the Stallions' house, and okay. like I said, we're we're part of the Houston poker community, and so nice for sure. And how old are they? Four and three. Oh, they got yeah. a ton of y'all. They got a ton yeah. of time. Everybody raising poker. kids in the playground, like <laughs> raise. Yeah, put yeah more. the uh, the stallions. The first year, we had these big computer screens set up so we could all play online bracelet events. Yeah. And my kids were like crawling in the labs, um, hitting buttons, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, like that. and that was part of it. I was like, "There's no way 
yeah. there's going to be a first ever poker team in this city. A poker family. And I'm not going to be right in the middle Ooh, of it. True. With, you know, not just me, but me, Tia, my family, kids, yeah. and everything. It's fucking sick, man. It's a great story. Um, anything else, Damien, before the million dollar question? Nah, I think we're ready for that million dollar question, Tony. All right. You love to do the spiel, so I'll let you go, man. So for me, poker ain't life. Especially PLO makes you dead inside. <laughs> so the reason I joke around and say that is because you could have fun playing the game, but sometimes the beats add up for you. So for me, poker ain't life. Sometimes I realize I just got to escape the game and like enjoy other aspects of life. So for me, poker ain't life. And then for Tony, for me, when I started this podcast, poker was very much life. I was deep into it but I think meeting Damon and helping him through some of the struggles he had with poker and you know just me and all the people along the way I realized that poker ain't life as well you know there's bigger avenue I mean bigger things to life than just poker but poker can be a great way for you to propel your life in any direction that you want um, so we're asking our two guests today what is it for you uh, it, it's crazy to say that poker's not life, mm -hmm. but but it, poker ain't life. That's there we go. That's Let's go. Love. Poker ain't I mean, life. Exactly. I love it, and uh, like I said, I'm <laughs> Fireman Scott everywhere I go, and I right. dedicate my career mm -hmm. to poker mm -hmm. and to the poker community. Right. But God allows me to do poker because I have a bigger message and bigger things to do, mm -hmm. and He's like, I'm so thankful and so gracious that I love games. I got a mind for games, and I love being entertaining and things like that. And I found a social game that I could make. I'm just lucky to be here, bro. Yeah. So blessed. I have bigger things to do for my father and my family. Sure. And I'm just happy that poker is the, the avenue. Yeah. Um, but like when you asked earlier if my kids are going to play poker, I hope so. And I hope that poker is an avenue for them to go. Mm -hmm. But if God points them in another direction, that's where they're going to go. Exactly. You know Absolutely. I mean? exactly. I'm very lucky that poker is our thing. Mm -hmm. and we're happy to be here. Yeah. But yeah. poker ain't life. No, nobody's above God, does. Exactly. Hey, there exactly. you go. I think that was probably one of the best responses we've got. For sure. And anything different or anything additional you'd want to add to that in terms of is poker life, poker ain't life, from well, your perspective? For me, I've learned so much from poker, life lessons, where I can just take that into the world. And I don't think poker is everything, but it's always going to have a special place in our hearts. Yeah. Agree. Yeah. And you know, your kids, you know, even if they don't go into poker, I'm sure just the, you know, being around you guys and probably they're going to pick up poker for sure. You know, even if they don't want to use it, the, the, the little lessons that they are learn, they're going to be able to use it in life. You yeah. know well, what I mean? And if they're not taking risks, exactly. if they're not players, they're going to certainly know what they're doing. And in the poker industry, I like to say, I'm going to make Elvis money. My kids are going to make Disneyland money. Yeah. My grandkids are going to make Jesus money. Mm -hmm. So we're doing generational things, yeah. you know. And right now, we started out playing underground <laughs> poker. My friend's getting shot and killed. Yeah. I'm not kidding, bro. That's the story we needed to hear, bro. <laughs> that, I mean, that's a sad story, but yeah, it's the way no. it was. Like, I've yeah. had friends get shot and killed in poker rooms. Yeah. Back, wow. robbed. Crazy stuff. Yeesh, yeah. And now, bro, I'm still playing the game I love, but on a big stage with the national anthem, with everybody staring. I mean, it's unbelievable, yeah. bro. I mean, we're very lucky. Yeah. And in our state is the place where it's growing the most. So if yeah. I can't, if we can't take advantage of this and do something good for our people, what are we doing? Exactly. It's, it's, it's there for us to do, you know? Yeah. yeah. Guys like you are gonna help us. Thank you. Yeah. We're gonna oh. do shows like this, mm -hmm. spread the word. Mm -hmm. Spread the and, word uh, and awareness. And we appreciate, or we thank y'all for letting us come on. Oh, well, thank well we thank no you guys for coming on. We thank Houston for growing overall on a larger scale from just in Houston to having successful poker players throughout the world, mm -hmm. um, such as yourself, such as Will. Also, thank you to the Poker Ain't Life community, everyone that came out to, uh, you know, out here in Vegas with us. Yeah. And most importantly, big shout out to everyone that helped us with the filming, to P, to Tyler, to Money Mike, the entire Poker Ain't Life crew. Also, uh, big kudos and thank you to Cedric, who's running deep right now in the Gladiator. Sure. I think the biggest thing for you guys is family. 
And I think for a lot of people, poker is family. Whether it's the people you meet at the table, whether it's the people you meet on break, whether it's the dealers or the person that gives you your massage, the whole point of poker is a family and a community, and I think this is just another way for us to bring different communities together. So with that being said, thank you, Fireman Scott. Thank you to the entire family. Thank you to everyone for supporting the community. And let's go out there and at least find your community, find your family, and always remember, poker ain't life. Yes, sir. See you at the final table. Smooth. Peace.